Let's say you've been working on your game for a little while now and you've got a couple of scenes that you'd like to put together. You're probably encountering one of these problems. The first one is that you may be able to walk around on the scene, collect some items and interact, and then head on over to the next scene. And you might even have rigged things so that your player actually shows up in that next scene. But chances are, the only reason this happens is because you created a player character in each scene. They're not actually the same character, but just every scene you go to has a character. At this point, you might be able to open up your inventory system and take a look, but you'll notice that there's nothing here. And that's just because this isn't the same inventory, nor is this the same player that existed in the first scene. They're just copies. If you've worked hard enough to create multiple scenes, an inventory system, collectible items, or just one of those three things, then you probably want your data to be carried with you from scene to scene. That's where we're headed in this tutorial. Let's get started. So the first problem that we're gonna solve here today is how to get game objects to persist from scene to scene. So let's start with our player. I'm just going to click on my player, and I'm also gonna to head to my scripts folder. I have a special folder for data persistence, but you can organize it how you like. And for now, let's just create a brand new c -sharp script and call this one, don't destroy. This is an incredibly simple script. For the moment, at least, all that we need to do is just in your start method, we wanna type in, do, don't destroy on load. And then in brackets, we just wanna say what we don't want to be destroyed. And in this case, it's just the game object that we put the script on. Now at this point, any object that we attach this script to will persist from scene to scene, meaning it won't get destroyed when it heads to the next scene. So I can just add component, go to don't destroy, and we're good to go. Now there's a couple things you should know here. First of all, I'm gonna add this to my player, but I'm also gonna put it on the canvas that holds all of my inventory and equipment systems. An important thing you should know though, is that don't destroy only works on parent objects. So if I clicked on my player and put this on one of the sub things like my animator controller or something like that, it would not work. But if you put it on the parent object, all of the children of that object will also persist. Now with that done, we should have our data persisting from scene to scene, but there's gonna be a new problem that creeps up. Let's just verify that we have equipment, yes, and an inventory. Now head to the next scene, and I can take a look here. Equipment, inventory, things are more or less working up, though <laughs> you'll notice we've got a problem. First off, because I had another player in the scene, we're now starting to double up. You also notice at the top of the screen, we've got double health, and you may notice here that my inventory, yes, it's working, but there's two inventories, one empty one and one full one, um, which is not as desired. When I head back to the scene, we're now, whoa, running into problems because there's multiple players, they're triggering the scene, and okay, this is a mess. Now there's a couple of ways we could fix this. We could delete all of the extra canvases and players in all of the other scenes so that only the main player persists in the main canvas. However, that creates a problem for playtesting because say I wanted to test level 1-2, then I'd have to go and add in the canvases and player each time I want to test it, and that's frustrating. So what we're going to do instead is just add a little bit to our script. That way, when we enter a new scene, the scene will actually check to see if there's a duplicate of the player and the different canvases, and if there is, it will destroy the duplicates. So to do this, we're going to head right back into our Don't Destroy script. Now, there's a number of different ways we could approach this. However, since I've been using arrays in many of my other tutorials, we're going to continue to do that here. So we'll start by creating a private static game object array called persistent objects. And this array is just gonna hold all of the objects we want to persist from scene to scene. Now, normally, if we made an array like this, every game object holding this script would keep track of its own list of objects and that wouldn't work. What we wanna do instead is use a static array, which means that all of the game objects using this script will be using the same list of objects. There's one more thing we have to do with this variable, and that is just that we need to make it equal to a new game object array, and we need to set a number of objects for the array. I'm gonna use three. What this will do at the start of the scene is just create an array with empty game objects. So as soon as you enter the scene, it will check to see if, for example, the player part of the array is empty, and if it is, it will allow the player to exist. However, if it's already full, it will delete any duplicate players. We're also gonna create one other variable here. This one's gonna be a public integer called object index. 
This will just be a unique index number that goes for each of your persistent objects. So for example, your player may go in slot 1, and each scene will check to see if there's anything else in slot 1, and if there is, it will delete the duplicate. Alright, at this point we're going to make one little change. First of all, we can get rid of update, as we're not going to be using that at all in this script. And instead of using start, we're going to change this to our awake method. The beauty of the awake method is that it runs immediately before the start method. So it allows our scene to check for duplicates and do its destroying thing, and then the scene can run as it normally would after that. So what we want to do in our awake, we're just going to move don't destroy down a little bit. So here we're just going to do an if statement, and we're going to check to see if persistent object, so that's our array, and we're going to look at a specific number. In this case, it'll be whatever the object index is. We're going to check to see if that is null, which just means empty. If that index is empty, that means that we don't yet have a player in our game, and so we need the player to continue to persist. So we'll grab our don't destroy and put it in there. Now along with not destroying our player, we also want to now fill the index so that it knows that that specific object now exists in the game, so it can check later for duplicates. Now to do that, we'll just say persistent objects of object index. So if it's the first one, it'll check index 0. It's like, hey, there's nothing in 0. Oh, this player is supposed to be an object index 0. It will now put in there. So we just put equals game object. So now object index number 0 will be filled with the player. It'll tell the player not to be destroyed, and it'll move on to the next object on the index, which might be our canvas. Now let's say that we get to scene 2. There's now two players in the scene, both with an index of 0. What they'll do is each one will check that list, and only the one that matches the object already entered in the list will persist. The other one we will want to destroy. Alright, so now when I click on my player, you'll notice that Don't Destroy now has an object index. I'm going to decide to make my player object index 0, and I'm going to make my canvases object index 1. Now in my case, those canvases are not actually a prefab, so that won't apply to all my canvases. So I'm just going to pop into my second scene now and make sure that they also match those numbers. Now I need to add the don't destroy as I didn't apply that change to my prefab. Make sure that he's set to zero. All right, with that done, I can now head back to scene one and let's give this a test. All right, so now when I get in the scene, I can collect my various items, which you can see are showing up. Excellent. You can head to the next scene. And when I get there, there's a player, but there's now no duplicate. This is the same player that I just had, and we can know because when we look at our inventory, we'll see that all of his equipment still persists. All right, with that done, I hope that you've found this helpful. If you have, be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightman Studio. Cheers.